praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad this morning? Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day, a beautiful day that our God has made. And we have come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. Lord, make me a house of prayer. Lord Jesus, throughout the week, Lord Jesus, keeping us, Lord God, from all hurt and harm and danger, seen and unseen, Lord Jesus. Thank you for showing yourself strong in our tests, in our trials that we are facing, Lord God, this week. You're a powerful God. You're a mighty God, Lord Jesus. We ask you to heal this land, Lord God. We ask you to move, Lord God, in this service, Lord God. 
continue to bless our pastor and our first lady and their daughter, Lord God, in a very special way. Look upon Mother Jones and the families, Lord God, here, Lord Jesus. Remember the sick in the nursing homes, Lord God, in the hospitals. Remember our young people, Lord Jesus. Remember the souls that recently went down in your name, Lord Jesus. Remember them, Lord God, in a very special way. Undergird the souls that lost loved ones, Lord Jesus, in a very special way. We thank you, Father God, for all what you have done. Continue to do, Lord God. Manifest yourself in this service, Lord God. Manifest yourself, Lord God, with your presence and your power, Lord God. Let there be a praise in the temple today, Lord God. Let there be a worship, Lord God, in the temple, Lord Jesus. Because uh, we're so grateful for all what you have done, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we appreciate you for all what you have done, Lord God. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Hallelujah. How many of you know or, or desire today to give God the praise? Hallelujah. Uh, can I just get some folk in the in the parking lot to just shout? Hallelujah. Come on, do it one more time. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now say, Lord, that hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah belongs to you. He deserves it.
My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 Help me say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah. Somebody give him a praise right there. We came to praise him. We came to worship him. For he is worthy of the glory. delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lender, and his seed is blessed. Depart the evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. An awesome God, and He is worthy of our praise today. So, those of you that want to get with us, get out of your cars, put your hands together as we sing this song. Lord, you're awesome. Come on, put your hands together.
you believe that he's awesome, give him some praise. Raise him in your car. Raise him on the parking lot. Raise him in your home. But if you believe that he's awesome, give him an awesome praise. All oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I bless God today for his goodness to us. Even in our present distress, God has been good. He has taken care of us. I see two on the parking lot who were recently quarantined because of COVID-19 and the fact that they tested positive, but they are here now, COVID-19 free. We just give thanks. Many of you have seen today our brother, Minister Frederick Ruffin, Ruffin, whom the Lord has brought home to us. So we give God thanks and we give him praise because he is worthy and in the midst of all that we are facing and that is facing us, he continues to show himself strong in our behalf. It just solidifies the statement that I made last week, which is not grammatically correct, but it is emphatically Correct. Ain't nobody like our God. If you believe it, give him some praise. Now today the message will come from again the 46th chapter of Isaiah. We visited it last week and here we are again, but this week we're going to consider verses 1 through 4 of Isaiah 46. Listen to the words of God through the prophet Isaiah. Bel boweth down, Nebo stupid. Their idols were upon beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beasts. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. And all God's people said, Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for the praise.
the worship that has ascended before you from this place today and from the homes of those who are tuning in. And I pray that you would honor, praise, the worship, hear the prayer, and receive it in the name of Jesus. Respond to it by giving us a word. We need to hear from you. We need a word today from you. We don't want to hear from high. We want to hear from heaven. Take now this word. Open it to us. Help us to receive it, to process it, and to apply it that we might grow through it and that we might be blessed through it. As for this vessel, I ask only clarity of thought, precision in my speech, the strength to speak your word. But most of all, let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength, my firm and impenetrable rock, and my redeemer. I ask these favors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Someone give God a praise. The scripture said, Bell boweth down. Nebel stupid. Their idols were upon the beasts and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaded. They are a burden to the weary beasts. They stoop, they bow together, they could not deliver the burden but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and deliver you. Let me read those last two verses one more time. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even will I carry and will deliver you. From this passage of scripture, I want to use for a subject just for a little while today, trust God. Very simply, trust God. I'll make it a little clearer as we get into the message. But this message is, of course, the continuation of the message that I shared with you last week. Ain't nobody like our God. In fact, that message was a setup for this message. In that message, we established the supremacy of God over any false god or pretender. That supremacy was based on three aspects of the nature of God as revealed in verses 9 and 10 of Isaiah 46. The qualities to which I am referring are God's omniscience, His sovereignty and his omnipotence. Those characteristics of God 
were necessary for Judah to know in that day as they were facing certain calamity and it is necessary that we know them today as we face this present calamity as well as our own personal trials and misfortunes. We need to know that we can trust God. So let's consider the text. As we approach chapter 46, we find God formulating the argument for his primacy. He wanted Judah to know that there was no God or creation of man's hands and imagination that could compare with him. But I need you to understand that God was not stating his case simply to show that he is God all by himself. He did not and does not have to do that. The truth is this. If God had never chosen to reveal himself, he would still be God. Amen. If he had never chosen a people, if he had never chosen to show himself strong in their behalf and in our behalf, he would still be God. If no one ever believed in him or served him, he would still be God. His deity is unaffected by any of those things. Well, pastor, if that is the case, why did he want Judah to know just how great he is? He wanted Judah to know how great he is, and he wants us to know how great he is in order for us to trust him in time of trouble and to walk with him at all times. God said to Judah, Baal and Nebo, the gods of Babylon, bow as they are lowered to the ground. They're being hauled away on ox carts. The beasts stagger under their weight. Both the idols and their owners are bowed down. The gods cannot protect the people. And the people cannot protect the gods. They go off into captivity together. Baal and Nebo, the greatest gods of the Babylonian pantheon of gods, were powerless before the true and living God. Baal, the god of power, and Nebo, the god of knowledge and wisdom, could do nothing for Judah. Far from being able to deliver Judah, Baal and Nebo themselves would be carried into captivity. But Judah would be carried by God. Let me say at this juncture, we need to learn to stop trusting in other sources who in truth can do or will do nothing for us. Right. You better trust God. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah in the time of Judah's greatest distress. And although they were facing captivity, the word that God spoke to the prophet was not a word of rebuke or punishment, but rather a word of comfort and consolation. It was no doubt surprising to Judah, but that is frequently the case with the God we serve. We are often surprised by the grace and mercy of our God. Just when we think that the punishment and the wrath of God are about to fall upon us, His loving kindness shows up 
to win us over to his way. This really should not be a surprise to us. The Apostle Paul reminded us of this methodology of God. He said to the Romans, despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And some of us here and under the sound of my voice have experienced just that. What do you mean, Pastor? We should have received judgment, but God showed us mercy. When punishment was our portion, God extended grace. And all of us can praise him because when hell was our lot, God gave us a way to get to heaven. For that we all ought to take a moment and give him some praise. Indeed, this amalgamation of the grace and mercy of God has always been the way that God has dealt with his people, not just in this so-called dispensation of grace, the age of the church, but from Adam until now, God has dealt with us through grace and mercy. The message today is especially for those who are facing prodigious trials or are in the midst of great difficulty and given our present circumstances that's just about all of us. God said, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb, and even to your old age I am he, and even to whore hairs, will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and deliver you. In that word that God gave to Isaiah to share with his people, he gave them a threefold promise. That promise was to assure Judah that although captivity was inevitable, he would be with them and that he would ultimately bring them out. Oh, you need to hear this today because even though COVID-19 is inevitable, it is here. He is with us and he will bring us out. And for those of you who think I might be about to get a little political, I just have to say it like this. He is with us today, even with the color of our skin. Right. He is foreseen police shooting us in the back because they were in fear of their lives. He was with us, but he will ultimately bring us out. All right. And while you all may be waiting for an act of Congress, don't hold your breath. I'm waiting for an act of God. God also informed or reminded Judah that he had been with them all along. God said to them, hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Those words hearken us back to some of the things that I shared with you on last week. One of the things that I shared with you last week is that God is sovereign. Because God is sovereign, he retains the right of choice. And while we think, we have the power to choose. I assure you 
that your right to choose is subordinate to his ultimate choice. And a part of that ultimate choice is you. All right. God chose you from the beginning. Before you had an opportunity to or accept or reject him, God had already chosen you. I want you to hear the words of verse 3 from the New International Version. It reads, Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all you who remain of the house of Israel, you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth. God said to Judah, and God is saying to us, I have chosen and upheld you from your conception. Now conception is where earthly life begins. But you were called before the foundation of the world. You were chosen before your parents ever got here. All right. And God said, I have been carrying you since you were born. His care for us did not, did not start when we acknowledged him as Savior and Lord. It did not start when we surrendered our wills to his will. And it did not commence when he saved us. But from birth, God has been with us and he has upheld us by his omnipotent hand. That is why you didn't die before you came to him. Though death may have stalked you and attempted to impose itself upon you, it could not have you because God had already chosen you. And if you faced death and came out of it all right before you came to Christ, then you know the truth of the statement I just made and you ought to give him some praise. I said a bit ago that in the word that God gave to Isaiah to share with his people, he gave them a threefold promise. I'm now ready to share that promise with you. It is found in Isaiah 46, verse number four, but I wanna share it with you through the New International Version. It reads, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. This is a ternary promise that extends from the cradle to the grave, from birth to death to eternal life. I'm leaving Judah now, and I'm turning completely to us because it is time to pull this word out of the distant past and bring it into our present and into our future. Let me tell you something, just as sure as God spoke this word through Isaiah then, he is speaking it through me now. Just as sure as it was meant for the church or the, the tribe of Judah then, it is meant for the church now. And just as sure as that word came to pass back then, it will come to pass now and it will carry us through the rest of our lives. You can trust God on that. So then, the question remains, what is contained in that ternary, that triple promise? Listen to verse four again, and let us discern the breadth of that promise. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he 
I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. The promise God gave is this. God will sustain us. God will carry us. And God will rescue or deliver us. Now allow me to elaborate upon each of these facets of his promise. When God said that he will sustain us, he meant that he will keep us in the midst of our trials. May I say this and you not get upset with me? There are times when God does not deliver us out of our troubles, but rather intends to keep us in them. God provides whatever it is that we need in order to take us through what we are facing. That is not deliverance. That's sustenance. It is akin to what David said in the 23rd Psalm when he said these words, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Notice, he didn't remove his enemies. He fed him in the presence of his enemies. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. God not only supplies us with what we need in order for us to make it through those times in which he does not intend to deliver us, he also gives us more than enough to make it through. David said, my cup runneth over. That indicates a super abundant supply. But the, the supply that God gives consists not simply of things, but of God himself. And when you have God, you have all that you need. And for that, somebody ought to give him some praise. Now, I don't need you to put your thinking caps on for this next portion of this threefold promise. God also said that he would carry us. That he would carry us. Can I deal with this? The Hebrew word for carry in this verse is esbol. Esbol is a derivative of the root sabal. When God said he would carry us, it is akin to the protective and tender care that an expectant mother employs as she carries her unborn child with all the hopes and dreams that define her expectation. It is as if God is saying, I am pregnant with you. You see, Sabal has gravid or pregnant as a definition. God is saying, I'm expecting. Can I preach? And what is God expecting? When God says, I'm expecting, you should ask him, what are you expecting? God is expecting you to become all that he has decreed you to be. God is expecting you to do all that he called you to do before the foundation of the world. God is expecting all his plans, all of his purposes, and all of his decrees for your life to come to pass without one of them failing. God's expectations form one of the reasons that he said in Isaiah 46 and 10, I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient time the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. I'm trying to tell somebody God always gets what he expects. And if he's expecting you to come out all right, then you ought to be expecting to come out all right.
So I just rose to tell somebody that you will come through this because God is expecting you to come through this. You will be victorious because God is expecting you to be victorious. You will make it for God is expecting you to make it. Right now, God is pregnant with the victorious you. God is pregnant with the overcoming you. God is pregnant with the triumphant you. And he will carry you to turn. He will not abort you. And he certainly will not miscarry you. Makes no difference what anybody else says. This is God's expectation. And I wish I had a praise. Finally, God said that he would deliver or rescue us. And that seems to be his specialty. And that is why he said, I will do all my pleasure. In that one statement, God told us, that he has the power to deliver anytime and by any means necessary. Let me show you what I mean. In Job 5, 19, we learn that God will deliver us in multiple troubles. In Psalm 31, verse 2, we learn that God will deliver us rapidly. In Psalm 31, 15, we learn that God will deliver us from the hand of our enemies, even the hands of COVID-19 and rogue cops. In Psalm 31, 19, we learn that God will deliver our souls from death. In Psalm 37, verse 40, we learn that God will deliver us from the wicked. In Psalm 59, verse 2, we learn that God will deliver us from the workers of iniquity in Psalm 91 and 3 we learn that God will deliver us out of snares in Matthew 6 and 3 we learn that God will deliver us from evil in 2 Corinthians 1 and 10 we learn that God has delivered God does deliver and God will keep on delivering I just came by to tell somebody that you can trust him at any time God can deliver in any situation God can deliver through any circumstance God can deliver and even the very term that is translated in our text hints at something one of its definitions is to be smooth God will deliver you so smoothly that you won't look like like what you've been through in fact you'll be something different altogether remember that we are talking about God and he referred to himself as God the strong one God the mighty one God your champion and so I just came by this parking lot and tuned into Facebook to tell you that you can and trust God trust him in time of trouble trust him in time of struggle trust him while you're going through trust him after he's brought you through from the cradle to the grave you can trust him you can trust God with all your hopes and dreams trust God through every bump in the road because he will sustain you he will carry you and he will deliver you. He's done it before and he'll do it again. Nobody can do for you what God can do for you. Bell can't do it. Nebo can't do it. Trump can't do it. Biden can't do it. Pence can't do it. Harris can't do it, the Democrats can't do it, the Republicans can't do it, can't nobody do it, but the God we serve, nobody can do for you 
what God can do for you. Nobody can be there for you like God can. Nobody can bless you like he can. Nobody can deliver you like he can. Nobody can heal you like he can. Nobody can help you like he can. Nobody can keep you like he can. Nobody can protect you like he can. Nobody can provide for you like he can. Nobody can save you like he can. Nobody else can because there's no one like him. He is God all by himself. And I just rose to tell you, you can trust God. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. Beyond any thing, beyond any one, beyond any institution, you can trust him. He is the ultimately trustworthy one. And if you've ever trusted him and found out that your faith, your trust, was well-founded, you ought to give him praise right now. I just need to ask a couple questions. To those of you who have tried him, won't he do it for you? Won't he make a way for you? Won't he open doors for you? The songwriter had it right when he said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. No other. Because no one is as trustworthy as the God we serve. How many of you know you can trust him? And so because you can, I pray that you do or that you will. I'm getting ready to close this up, but I need to pray for some folk today who are in the midst of a struggle. COVID-19 has not only presented itself as a scourge, but it has brought other scourges with it, like unemployment, right. like fear, so many others. We are facing things either directly or indirectly because of this pandemic. And then they are just things that the adversary throws our way, I guess on general principle, because you have decided to love God and not the world. And so he is angry with you and you go through because of that. But for all of you who are going through and you need a little extra bump in order to trust God and in order to come out all right, I want you to stand where you are. If you're on Facebook, just type in me. But if you're in the parking lot, get out of the car, stand where you are. I need to know who I'm praying for. I place my trust squarely in God. Because the scripture told me don't trust in princes. Don't trust in leaders. Pastor, wait a minute, aren't you a leader? Yes, I am. 
Don't trust in me either. I can't get done for you what God can get done for you. He is the one that you place your ultimate trust, your faith, your hope in. I'm looking at somebody who just beat COVID-19 with her hands outstretched, giving God the glory. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, where that is concerned, COVID-19 is bad. Don't get me wrong. It is horrible. And I certainly would not diminish or stand here and try to diminish the effects of COVID-19. But every now and then, we need to remember that people are surviving COVID-19. They have gotten it and have come through it. And for that, we ought to give God some praise. The news doesn't always tell us about the survivors. Because bad news sells and good news does not. So every now and then they'll say something in passing about how many have survived. But thank God for all who have survived. We bless God for all who have survived COVID-19 and we thank God for those right here in the parking lot who have survived COVID-19. But there are other issues, are there not? There are other things that we are dealing with. And I think you got out of your cars because you've got something right now that you need to trust God for. And I'm sure you've typed in on Facebook, me, because you have issues where if God does not do it, it will not get done. But let me just say this. Sometimes God allows those situations to happen so that folk can know he's real. There are people who are watching you, dear hearts, as you go through. They're watching you. And when they see you come out and know it had to be God, they will have to give God the glory. So God is using you in your situation and in your circumstance. You ought to give praise that he counted you worthy. Now let's pray because I feel miracles. Does anybody else feel miracles? My God, I feel miracles. And no, we don't have to lay hands because the miracle is not in the hand. The miracle is in God. But I feel miracles today. So I just feel like the Holy Ghost is saying, pray for the miraculous. If you want a miracle, shout me right now. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Because from age to age, you remain the same. Your power has not diminished one iota. You still remain the God of miracles. And you are still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. And it is because of that and because of this unction that we ask now for miracles. Miracles in this parking lot. Miracles for those who are on Facebook. You know the miracle that they need, but we claim it now in the name of Jesus. I am encouraged because I heard today, Father, of a miracle that had been performed, and I'm so grateful because I know that you are not done performing miracles, so we claim it now in the name of Jesus. For everyone in need of a miracle, do it, Holy Ghost. For everyone who needs to see your power and your glory, do it, Holy Ghost. For everyone who is standing by faith, do it, Holy Ghost. For everyone who dares to trust you in their situation and in their circumstance, do it, Holy Ghost. And we claim it done even now in the name of Jesus. Somebody put a praise on it.
Put our praise on it. Put our praise on it. I'm expecting. Now, I told you God's expecting today, but now I'm expecting. I'm expecting many of you to have a testimony for me this week about what God had done. I'm waiting to hear from you about what God did in your life and how you got the miracle that you trust him for. How many of you believe you're going to receive? Then praise him right now. Give him a, give him a serious praise in advance. You are in the parking lot and you need to be saved. Would you to wave your hands? The ministers are circulating and will share with you what you need to do. If you're on Facebook and you need to be saved, hit me up in the inbox and I'll get back with you and tell you what you need to do. But salvation, the greatest miracle, is here today too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel good in Jesus' name. I better let y'all go before I have church all over again. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for joining us, being with us. Thank you for meeting us here, beating us here, and doing everything that we need you to do and more. We are so grateful. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds to leave this place, Go with each of us to our several destinations. Watch over us. Keep us until we meet again. And we will be mindful to give you the praise, the glory, the honor that's due you. We ask these favors in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Till next time, keep looking up. Keep looking up. All of y'all, I need that microphone, the one with the cord. I'm retiring, the service is over, I'm retiring, but before...